If you are searching for a new graphics card and you want to play at 1080p resolution, this is going to be the perfect video for you because today I will be ranking the best and worst 1080p graphics cards in 2024. I will be ranking them in a tier list explaining every pick. And also down below in the description you will have my favorite graphics cards for 1080p in case you want to buy the best graphics card for your budget and your needs. My name is Valentino and with that being said, let's start. So we are going to start with the RTX 3050 6 gigabyte version. This is one of the latest GPUs from Nvidia. And honestly, I do not like this graphics card. I would only buy it if you have a very old system and you want to upgrade it and you are working with a very, very tight budget. But honestly, I don't see the point of this graphics card apart from upgrading all systems like the Dell Optiplex and Office PCs. But other than that, I do not like it. The level of performance is just not there. It's not enough in my opinion. Six gigs of VRAM is also not enough for 1080p unless you only want to play Minecraft or Fortnite and these type of games. Now I'm going to put it in the DT rated, but that might change throughout the video depending on my other picks. Now after that we have the RTX 3050 8 GB version which in my opinion is slightly better in terms of value than the 6 GB version just because you get better performance and you get 2 gigs of extra VRAM but this doesn't mean that it's good value I do not like the price for this one because you will see that you can get much better GPUs than this one for a cheaper price so for that reason this one is going into my D tier again but this one is better than the 6 GB version in terms of value so it's it's going to be one step above. Next we have the RTX 3060 12 GB version. I do not have anything against this graphics card. I actually think that it's a pretty good graphics card for 1080p. My issue with this one is the price. I think it's too high and for around the same price you can get the RTX 4060 which is going to give you better gaming performance. Yes, the 4060 has less VRAM. The 3060 has 12 gigs of VRAM compared to 8 from the 4060, but it's slower. That being said, this one is going into my V tier. It's not going into my C tier because I do think that it's a good graphics card for 1080p. So it's going into my V tier for now. Again, that might change throughout this video. Next, we have the 3060 8GB version. I would not recommend you buying this graphics card. It's like the 3050 6GB. It's a cut down version of the 3060 and it doesn't have the same performance. If it had the same performance for a lower price, then my opinion would be different, but the performance here is slower and it's just not going to get the job done for the price. I believe it's going for around $250 US, so not great in terms of pricing considering the other graphics cards that are in this tier list. For that reason, this one is going into my C tier. Next, we have one from Intel. This one is the Intel Arc A380, the cheapest one, and this one is the cheapest GPU from Intel. Once again, I do not like this one, mainly because of the level of performance. It's just not there. If you want a functional PC and you just want to play, I don't know, Minecraft, then you are going to be fine with this graphics card. And it's very similar in terms of performance to the RTX 3050 6 GB version. So I'm going to put it in the D tier as well and it's just not great in terms of performance it, but if you are on an ultra budget and once again you want to upgrade an old office desktop then it might make sense for you otherwise I just think that you should never buy this graphics card. I'm going to put it one below the 3056 GB version just because of the drivers. Then we have the Intel Arc A580. Now this one is amazing in terms of price to performance, very similar in terms of performance with the RX 6600 from AMD and it's going to give you about the same gaming performance and it's cheaper. So this one is going into my A tier. The only reason why this one is not on my S tier is because of the driver. If Intel can figure out the drivers then this one will be on my S tier because of how good this one is in terms of price to performance and it's also amazing for content creators. So if you're a content creator on a budget I think this one is the right graphics card to pick. Then we have the Intel Arc A750 which is slightly more expensive than the A580 and it's going to give you slightly better performance. So in terms of value is nice. It has a very similar performance compared to the RTX 3060 for almost a hundred dollars less. So in terms of value is there. But honestly, I think the A580 is better in terms of price to performance. That's why this one is going into my V tier one step above the 3060. Wait, there we go. One step above the 3060. 
And remember, I'm not ranking them in terms of chess performance, I'm ranking them in terms of overall price to performance, also if they are good for content creation or not, and the feature set that they have overall. The next one is the 4060 Ti, this one is the 8GB version by the way, and it's just too expensive in my opinion. I think Nvidia is not winning in the 1080p market, I think at 1440p and 4K my opinion is different. I actually made an entire video talking about 1440p graphics cards in a tier list as well, you can go ahead and watch that one in the top right of the screen after you finish watching this one. But I do believe the 4060 8GB version is amazing in terms of performance, it's just not there in terms of price. And for this one to be a 1080p gaming graphics card and it's almost $400, honestly I don't know how to feel about that. You can play at 1440p as well with this one, but for a 1440p monitor I would recommend you having 12 gigs of VRAM, especially if you want to play high demandings now and high demanding games in the future. So the 4060 8GB version is going into my V tier in the middle just because it has better performance compared to the 3060 but the pricing is just horrible in my opinion. Then we have the RTX 4060 which is the one that I have right here and the one that I'm using for that system. I actually tested this graphics card for Fortnite and I've made an entire system for Fortnite. You can also watch that video in the top right of the screen in case you want a Fortnite system. Anyway back to this one, the 4060 I think is a nice graphics card, I do like the performance, the price is not excellent, is $300. This one was around 250 bucks. I think this one would be on my S tier actually. But I think for the price and performance overall, considering that you have the LSS and you have a better level of ray tracing, even though at 1080p I wouldn't recommend you using DLSS or ray tracing at this level. You have those features, it's also pretty decent in terms of content creation performance and AI stuff. For that reason, this one is going into my V tier. Not ideal but if you get it, it's actually a good graphics card and you will be happy with it. The next ones are from AMD and I think AMD wins in the 1080p market just because they usually have the better price performance graphics cards and if you are on the high-end market looking for a graphics card for 1440p or 4k high to ultra settings then I do think the Nvidia feature set is going to matter a bit more but at this budget level considering that AMD usually has more VRAM, more performance for a cheaper price I think they are the better option when it comes to gaming. However the RX 6400 is not ideal and it's going into my D tier because of the level of performance that you're getting. Very similar to the ARC A380 and RTX 3050 6GB version, so this one is going into my D tier, one below the 3050 just because you get less VRAM. You get 4 gigs of VRAM in the 6400 and 6 gigs of VRAM in the 3050. Now the RX 6600 is going into my A tier, one step above the Intel ARC A580, let me put it here. I always struggle when I try to put a graphics card in this list, I don't know why. Anyway, the A580 is very similar to the 6600 for a cheaper price, but the 6600 has a better driver support. That's why it's going into my A tier. And the reason why this one is not on my S tier is because even though it has better drivers and around the same performance, it is more expensive. So if the 6600 was the same price as the Intel Arc A580, it would be on my S tier. And the first S tier on my list is going to be the RX 6650 XT. Just because it's a bit more expensive than the 6600, I believe it's around 15 to 20 dollars more expensive, but you are going to be getting a 20% faster performance on average when it comes to gaming. Very good in terms of price to performance in my opinion. And honestly, you can play any game at 1080p that you want with this one. The only thing that I do not like is that it has 8 gigs of VRAM, but at this price point, you cannot ask for more. The 6650 XT, amazing in terms of price to performance, you are going to be happy with it. Very similar in terms of performance to the RTX 4060, but you are spending around $80 less. So just great in terms of value for gaming. The next one, the 6750 XT or 6700 XT, is going also into my S tier, but this one is one step ahead, the 6650 XT. The reason why I believe this one is the best one that you can get right now is because of the price to performance that you are getting. The 6750 XT is the same price as the RTX 4060 when recording this video and it's going to give you much faster gaming performance and it has 12 gigs of VRAM, meaning that it's not only great for 1080p but also a very nice 1440p graphics card in case you want to upgrade down the line. Or if you want to stay at 1080p, you will be getting higher FPS now and because you get 12 gigs of VRAM, you get a better 
future path at this resolution. That's why it's going into my S tier and I believe it's much better than the 6650 XT not only because of the performance difference, but because of the VRAM difference. So S tier, I believe this is the best one that you can get for 1080p and also if you want to eventually upgrade to 1440p. Now the next one is the 7600 non XT. This one is not great in terms of value in my opinion and it's going into my C tier one step above the 3068GB version. Just because it has about the same level of performance as the 6650 XT and it's about $30 more expensive. So you are spending $30 more for the same performance. It's basically the same graphics card. The only difference is that you get AV1 encoding in the RX 7600, which might be helpful if you are going to do streaming in some scenarios. But overall, uh, it's basically the same graphics cards. Spending more to get the same GPU, it just doesn't feel right for me. That's why it's going into my C tier. And then we have the 7600 XT. It's going right here and it's going one step above the 3060 12GB version. You know what is the biggest competition for this graphics card? It's AMD. Basically, AMD's competition is AMD with this GPU because as you can see here, the 6750 XT is on my S tier and that graphics card is faster than the 7600 XT and about 20 to 30 dollars cheaper. Just like the 7600 with the 6650 XT, the 6750 XT is basically the same graphics card at a cheaper price, but it's not really the same because you get better performance. Before, when I was talking about the 7600 non-XT, I was talking about the same level of performance for a more expensive price. Here we are talking about a lower level of performance for a higher price. So. The 7600 XT, not great in terms of price or performance. Now, if you can't buy the 6750 XT or 6700 XT in the market anymore because they are out of stock and they stop producing them, well, then the 7600 XT is going to be your only option. But right now, since you can get the 6750 XT, I would honestly buy one if you have the money to. And remember, the graphics card is the most important component when it comes to your gaming performance, but you have to buy the right components around the graphics card. Otherwise, you can be bottlenecking your gaming performance by bottlenecking your graphics card or bottlenecking your entire system. For that reason, down in the description, you will find my video on the best gaming PC builds of the month for every budget and every resolution. And remember that down below as well, you will also find my favorite picks for 1080p graphics cards for different budgets. That way, if you're looking to buy one, you will have the right graphics cards there. Let me know how I did with this tier list and the things that you would change instead of this one. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for your support, and I will see you on the next one.